Hello, everyone. We're here today with the Jeff Glover on the Sales Beast podcast, and we're super excited to be chatting with him today. So, Jeff, just to get started, why don't you give us a brief intro on who you are, where you're at, and um, just tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, sure. Uh, Jeff Glover from Detroit, Michigan, and uh, I've been selling real estate now for 18 years now. And uh, this is basically all I know out of, out of high school. I got right into real estate and uh, I'm still on the ground selling between 80 and 120 homes a year. Uh, over the last decade, I've averaged over 100 sales a year myself personally. Our team does around 900 to 1,000 transactions a year and we've done so for the past five or six years. Um, I've, I've ha- held a bunch of different positions in this, in this great industry. Uh, everything from obviously a real estate salesperson to running real estate offices, to training, to recruiting, to coaching and training and, or, you know, running a coaching and training organization. And um, again, my passion is selling real estate. So that's, that's where I spend uh, a lot of my time. In fact, I've got two appointments later this evening. So uh, it's important to stay sharp. Absolutely. So one thing that you said to me here that really stood out, and I didn't know you five or six years ago, but based on what you've told me about yourself and what other people have told me about you, five or six years ago, you were a very different person in the way you conducted your business. Your business looked way different. Mm-hmm. For us, you shared that with us and we implemented a lot of your strategies. Who yeah. was Jeff five years ago and what makes the Jeff we're sitting in front of today different? Well, um, a couple things. Number one, um, we were very heavy, heavy uh, prospecting based. Um, um, we were very good at putting people in the funnel. Uh, you know, uh, if you followed anything that I've been saying over the last four or five years since I've learned better, um, there's two jobs of a real estate agent, right? Job number one, you know, we all are walking around with this big funnel in front of us. And our first job is to put people in the funnel, whether it be through prospecting, lead follow-up, database, um, advertising, buying leads, whatever, you know, cold calling, whatever you got to do to put people in the funnel. The second part of our job is to take care of them once they're in there. And for years and years, we were known for, and we really hit a home run with putting people in the funnel. But it wasn't until about four or five years ago that we said, you know, we're missing the boat on taking care of the people that are in our funnel. We're missing the boat on adding value to that group. And, you know, we weren't getting as much repeat referral business as we should have been given the amount of units we were doing. Um, You know, we were doing over a thousand units and less than 15% or 20% of that was repeat referral. (laughs) 80% of our business was new business every year. And so we had to to recreate our customer experience and and improve our customer service and also put into place essentially a database formula um, to add value to the people that are in our database so we could get repeat and referral business from them. And um, I'm proud to say, Mike, uh, over the last five years, database business is now our number one source of business uh, versus it was like number seven five years ago and um, just over 400 transactions a year today come from our database when it was less than 100 five years ago that's awesome difference are you you comfortable sharing the details of, of your plan yeah, sure. No, not at all. Yeah. Um, so we, we follow a pretty simple formula. In fact, a lot of people are like, you know, when I'm, when I'm sharing this with audiences, you can see everyone grabs their pen, like turns to a clean sheet of paper. Ooh, I want to know what did he do to go from 100 to 400 in, in, in four or five years. And it's, it's actually not like, you know, rocket science. It's not anything that's like, Oh my God, that's the first time I've ever heard that, but it's a formula that we've been following for four now five years. And and it works. So sure. Um, I call it the four by two by one by 12 formula. Um, and, and that's just because that's what it entails, <laughs> you, which you'll see in a second. So it's four pieces of, of physical mail, uh, mail that you would send out to somebody in your database that they would receive, you know, like getting a letter in, in the mail. Um, it is two phone value added phone calls, uh, two value added phone calls, which I can break down the details on these even further if you want on what we actually say and what we send out and so forth. Um, So that's what the two stands for. The one stands for one big client event. 
Uh, and I'll put an asterisk next to that right now because obviously we're doing a lot of those virtually. So we can't have just one big massive event. We're doing a lot of different virtual events. Again, I could share some of those. And then the 12 stands for 12 info infotaining emails. Uh, 12 informational and entertaining emails. And that's the four by two by one by 12. We do that in one year. So a 12 month period. That's awesome. We, uh, thanks you just rolled that out. We just did our first event. We uh, hosted a food drive and I think got something like eight listing leads off of it in one day. Right. Insane. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the, 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 the you know, I, I didn't realize um, the value that you get out of your database when you actually add value to them. We, I think we reached as a team that point last year when we realized, like you five years ago, we had an amazing database and we were doing a great job at filling the pipeline, but not a great job at giving value to the people that we had. So yep. we had a huge database and now we're overwhelmed with the amount of people in there and we're trying to skim down. Yeah, that's good. And it's, it's, it's uh, amazing what happens when you add value to that group. And, and also in our business, you know, going back to your question, Mike, one of the biggest transformations we went through is we had a couple of years where we weren't making any money. You know, we were winning the awards, you know, 5 million in GCI, 6 million in GCI, but we weren't making much money. Uh, you know, we were, we were paying pretty high agent splits and we had pretty high costs. So after you pay high splits and you have high costs, there's not a lot left over. So the nice thing about database business as well is it has helped return the company to a healthy level of profitability. Um, to give you an example, five years ago, our advertising budget was 1.5 million. And we were doing about a thousand transactions. Today, our advertising budget is maybe 750,000 and we're still doing around a thousand transactions. So all of that goes to the bottom line, right? Because we were able to pick up a substantial increase in business from our database that we lost by dialing back our mass advertising. Amazing. So maybe we can go back and, and dive into some of those pieces, if you don't mind. Sure. So picking apart, for example, the calls, I know that's something that's difficult for a lot of agents is to be calling their sphere and feeling like, you know, I feel like I'm bugging the yeah. people in my database. So what are the things that you guys say on those value add phone calls? Yeah. So, so actually um, we only call our database twice a year in that formula, as you saw. And um, the first call is an invite to our client event which that happens around the springtime. And the second call is a gratitude call the week of Thanksgiving. So the week of Thanksgiving, we call this database days. Uh, all of our agents come in, you know, you mostly casual and they go through their database and reach out to everyone in, in, in their past client and their sphere database, wish everyone, you know, um, uh, happy Thanksgiving, thank them for their business, their continued referrals. And uh, it's just a nice, warm and friendly call right before the holidays. You know, some people do it, uh, you know, around Christmas uh, or in December. Some people do it the week between Christmas and New Year's. Um, we, we like to do it around the week of Thanksgiving since most of our, our people, uh, you know, are, are off anyways for that week. Uh, you know, most consumers have that week off. So a lot of people answer their phones. A lot of people are in good moods. Uh, it's just a, gener a generally good thing to do for us. You, um, like I know for some of our guys, when we look at a strategy like that, I would think it's more of a long game where mm, yeah. you guys in the States, you can hop on the phone and call Fizbo's and yeah, you're not going to get, you're not going to get an immediate lead, unfortunately. Now, sometimes you'll get an immediate lead on those calls, but not usually. And, um, you know, that's, that's where the, that's the downside of, of those types of calls. Uh, you don't necessarily get immediate business. And so it's hard to make them because you're putting in an effort and you're not, you're not, you know, after a couple of days getting a lead and, and feeling like it was successful. But I promise you over the course of several years of doing it, it turns very successful. Yeah. So you I, do I, to, to actually get the individuals on your team to buy into that system and make those calls. Um, yeah, so basically we show them a lot of examples of teams around the country that um, were doing a really good job at database and growing, growing their databases. Uh, I also put together, and it's floating around the internet somewhere, um, and basically a document that says the benefits of being a database agent. Uh, in fact, I shared it at our Orlando event last January 2020. 
Um, so I think it's in our, in our Facebook group, maybe anyways, it's, it's out there somewhere. I can figure out a way to get it to you guys. Um, but basically we just shared with them and quite frankly, sold them on the benefits of being a database based agent. I mean, things like you have higher conversion ratios, you have lower stress, um, you have, um, 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 less wasted time because you have higher conversion ratios. You're more likely to get positive reviews and positive reviews lead to more future business. You're more likely to get repeat and referral business, right? There's just so many benefits to being a database agent that quite frankly, I ignored, I ignored for years. Uh, I just, you know, felt like I could, you know, just advertise and prospect my way to success. And to, to some degree, don't get me wrong, we did, uh, but it becomes exhausting and it becomes, you know, you start looking around and thinking there's gotta be a better way to do this. And um, that's, that's what we experienced. Yeah, with that, that said, I, when I got into the business, I had a reputation of being very transactional and it's almost like every day you're starting from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It is so much easier. I think naturally just being in the business over a certain period of time, yep. you get more repeat and referral, but if you can be perfect, about it yep um your business will explode bingo and likewise um you know agents are usually looking for that instant gratification that comes from you know getting that listing appointment or getting that buyer appointment so that's maybe why they're straying away from doing it but i truly do believe in the fact that your database is your paycheck that's yep. that's where it's direct correlation and how you're treating your people and how they're going to return to you yep that's now right. Uh, Jeff, how, how quickly did you guys start seeing the results? Like, obviously you implement that, implemented some of these things maybe five, yeah. four years ago. Yep. What did that look like? Well, we, we did see some results uh, right away. I mean, you're going to get some people, you know, the reason why we do the Thanksgiving calls um, is because, and, and quite frankly, let's just call them holiday calls. The reason why we make the calls around the holidays is because there's no other time in the year where in a 30 day span, people are going to see more friends, more family than probably any other 30 day span of the rest of the year. And so because you're fresh in their mind, there's a pretty good chance that when real estate comes up, because it's going to come up, when real estate comes up, they're going to suggest you, they're going to recommend you um, and because you're fresh in their mind. You just reached out to them a week prior or a day prior or 10 days prior. And so you know that in any family setting or friend setting, the topic of real estate is if there's if there's a top five subject uh, of homeowners, I'm sure there's studies on this. I would imagine that real estate is in the top five of things that come up in conversation when people haven't seen each other in a while. Oh, did you buy that home? Did you sell that house? How's that going? Oh, we're moving, right? People just talk about where they're moving and where they're living. Having a similar conversation with one of the agents on our team this morning about he's a newer agent and he's asking how to get repeat and referral. And one thing I've noticed since I've time in the business, it's when someone's in the process of transacting, selling or buying a house, it's the most important thing going on in their lives. And they're almost like little lead generation machines. When they meet their family, they're talking about how their transaction's going. When they meet their friends, the same thing. If yep. you, you just put it out there that you would appreciate them to put you in touch with anyone they know that's thinking about mm -hmm. real estate at that particular moment, um, your level of referrals goes through the roof. Yeah, we Especially have a, market, uh, we like have sales contests all the time, and one of the techniques that I share with our agents to do during sales contests is to share with social media. And some of them even call their database, share with social media that you're in the middle of a sales contest right now. I need your help. And people, people like to help others, mm -hmm. especially when they're family and friends. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, you know, aside from this specific system that you guys have implemented, I know there's a lot of different things that you guys look to implement. So, what is maybe that next thing that your team is looking forward to bringing on board to help you either systematize or provide more efficient results for, for your, both your clients and your agents? Yeah. So a couple things, um, you know, we're actually in the process of recreating our live unreal experience, which is something that, that we are very passionate about creating an unreal experience for our agents. 
uh, and, you know, so that way it shows up in their experiences with their clients. So that's something that we're in the process of rewriting right now. I mean, going as far as, you know, agents needing their car wash or their cars gassed up or their laundry picked up. I mean, stuff to make their, their life easier so they, they don't have as many distractions uh, is a big thing that we're implementing this year as, as, as part of the value of being on our team. Um, and I would say the other thing is, is doing a better job of, of numbers tracking. You know, there's a lot of good systems out there for that. We implemented a few over the last few years and, and um, we're, we're looking at another one um, that, that we think is, is going to help us have a better pulse on where we, you know, if you know your agent's numbers, then you've got a better chance of coaching them. Uh, if you don't know what they're great at or what their strengths are, or what their weaknesses are, then it's hard to really identify a, a pain point or a challenge to help somebody on. So yeah, that, yeah. I would say those are our two focuses this year, doing a better job of really truly, instead of, you know, looking across the hall and saying, okay, yeah, that's a 24 deal a year producer. That's a 36 deal a year producer. Oh, there's our 80 deal a year producer. We can say, that's a 24 deal a year producer. They, they close 68% of the listings they go on. 47% of the offers they write get accepted, right? I, we need to know that stuff. So then I can say, okay, well, how is it that, that, that Allison is at 70% of her offers are getting accepted and Bob is at 40%. What are they doing differently? Hey, Bob, why don't you go talk to Allison and how she's, and by the way, we make all these numbers public. Uh, we've got screens all over our, mm -hmm. all around our office so our agents can see how each other is doing in each one of those categories. So it's a little bit of, of added accountability as well. Well, I love that because when we visited your office back in 2019, we actually got to experience that firsthand and it almost creates like a, a gamification process of yeah. the sales. And That's it's right. a little bit of friendly competition in between the office, right? Yep, it is. It's accountability. It's, it's friendly competition. Uh, it's recognition. Uh, there's, there's a lot of benefits to publicizing those things. Okay, so I want to go back a little bit for, for the listeners that maybe haven't heard from me before. Uh, we do have a great audience in Canada, and I'm not sure if everyone knows who you are. But yeah. regardless, I want to touch on the live unreal portion of your business, right? Yeah. What does that mean to you? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so uh, live unreal started actually. Uh, so first things first, uh, the term unreal Um we, we put a definition to that as something so amazing, it's almost unbelievable. Uh, we were trying to think of, of a word that could define a state or being or something that we we're trying to accomplish. You know, we want to have, uh, we don't want to have amazing results. We don't want to have great results. We, wanna, we don't want to have awesome results. We needed something that defined an experience that was like unheard of. And so Unreal like, essentially was born out of that conversation. And our definition for Unreal is something so amazing, it's almost unbelievable, right? That's basically at that point, if it's almost unbelievable, it might not be real, right? So it's just before it gets to that point. And so uh, it started as actually the mission statement of our team and our belief system was, if we can help our agents to live unreal lives, um, not just at the office, you know, at home with their family, uh, with their friends, um, you know, with, with, with their vacations, with the things they're doing with their spouses and significant others. If we can help our associates to live an unreal experience on this earth, then our thought process was it would show up in the client experience. It would show up in their sales results. It would show up in wanting to come into the office and get more of that feeling. Uh, it would show up in, in wanting to stay a little later and make that extra call. It would show up in everything they did. And so that's been the mission of our sales team the last five years. And um, over the last couple of years, we've now have taken that mission and we've shared it with those that follow us at Glover U, which, you know, we have plenty of followers, as you mentioned, in, in Canada, obviously, of course, in the U.S. as well. And our whole, our whole thought process is, okay, if we can do that with JGA, Jeff Glover and Associates here in Detroit, Michigan, then we can share this with all of North America and have agents from the United States and Canada implement this into their own environment as well. And um, that, that's our mission and that's what we're working on right now. That's great. I think it was a very powerful message when yourself and Kate Simon, she's your lead coach, came on and did our team advance at the end of the year last year. Yeah. It was 
an awesome experience. And for, for people that are considering, you know, how to motivate and train the team, if they want some systems implemented, I would highly, highly suggest that they reach out to Jeff and, and learn from what their team is doing because they're doing some great stuff there. Yeah. And I appreciate you saying that. And there, there's a lot of great speakers and a lot of great coaches out there. You know, people sometimes will ask, you know, well, what makes you guys different? You know, you, you, you see nowadays because of Facebook, you sell 10 homes and you can become a real estate coach, right? <laughs> Back in the day, there was only like four or five and that was it. You knew who to follow. Well, today you don't know who to follow because everyone's a real estate coach. Um, but the, the, the answer I would give to, to that point, Anna, is, we're doing it. We're on the ground. This isn't something I'm reading in a book or heard in a Facebook group last night. This is just what we're doing. We're just sharing with you what we're doing. Yeah. Huge testament. Like you said, boots on the ground. You've been in the industry from, from a young age and you're still killing it doing a hundred deals a year. So um, what, what better way than to hear from someone that's actually actively doing it day in and day out. Right. Yep. Thank you for that. One thing I wanted to talk to you about, so I listen to your podcast, it's awesome. And through listening to those episodes, and you come out and coach us for our 2021 planning. I've noticed your ability to follow a schedule and get way more done than your average person. Mm -hmm. It's kind of mind blowing. So you run a coaching business, you sell a hundred houses a year. You run a team that sells a thousand houses a year. You run multiple brokerages. How does one person fit that much into their life? Yeah, so I'm gonna answer that two ways. Uh, number one, my first response to that is having great right-hand people. Um, you know, each one of the organizations, you know, when I think of when I think of JGA, it used to be Taylor Kerrigan, now it's Taylor Cornfield. Taylor Kerrigan's running operations for bigger stuff with us, Glover U. You know, uh, when I think of Glover U, as, as Anna mentioned, Kate Simon, um, when I think about our real estate brokerages, having strong CEOs or team leaders in those roles, um, you know, our, our title company, having a strong title uh, agency manager there. So the, the first way I'm going to answer that is uh, having the right people helping you in those roles and meeting with them weekly, one-on-ones, face-to-face, with an agenda each time, each and every week. Um, and the second thing I would answer to that is, as you mentioned, Mike, I am fanatical with my time. Um, I, uh, my, my time is blocked essentially in 15 minute increments. And so I try to accomplish what most accomplish in one hour. I try to accomplish four things in that same amount of time. Uh, and so most of the meetings that I'm involved in, um, you know, we look at, okay, if the meeting's an hour, what portion of that meeting is Jeff needed for? And, and can we chunk that to 30 minutes or to 15 or 45? Um, you know, so like even, even this, and I don't know how long we're going, so I'm just being silly when I say this, but uh, I think we have this slated for an hour. And I know, you know, before I hopped on, Taylor said, okay, are you going to be on there for 45 minutes? Or are you going to be on there for 60? Because everything we do is for 15 in 15 minute increments, because if I was only going to be on here for 45 minutes, then she could put another thing in my schedule for those last 15 minutes of this hour. By the way, no pressure. If, if, it's, <laughs> if you go an hour, don't worry, don't feel guilty. <laughs> Blended naturally. Um, so I want to, I want to go back to it. I, I truly believe, um, you know, success results through others, like everything that we are taught through Keller Williams and, and um, having those great people in your environment is really, really important. Now for you, Jeff, uh, what are some of the qualifiers for people joining an organization? Like what are some of the things that you actually look for mm -hmm. when you want that, you know, next top talent or someone to lead the way in uh, okay. one of your next charges? Well, we really, we really try to um, advance from within. Uh, you know, if you look at the leaders in our organization today, most of them have been with me for a while and they were in starter roles at one point, right? Like I think about my longest tenured team leader. Um, she was the productivity coach of the office. Uh, I think about, you know, the operations manager at JGA, our real estate team. You know, she started at the front desk, you know, four or five years ago. Uh, I think of Taylor Kerrigan, who eight years ago started as a marketing assistant. Uh, Kate Simon, who was our very first inside sales associate 10 plus years ago, um, or one of our first, I think she was actually our third, but one of our first. Um, so I, I am a big believer of, of, of making people start in the mail room. So they're forced to understand the company better, 
the gr they're part of the growth and, and they're cross trained and and can step up when need be and and leaders will emerge you know um i think of uh, I, I'll give you an example. So um, our, our head operations per person um, will not be available. Uh, Taylor will, Taylor Kerrigan will be down there, but our other Taylor won't be able to make our event coming up in Orlando next month. So we have identified two people that essentially we want to give a chance to emerge as a leader. So they're going to have an opportunity to go do some half day sessions with me in Florida and we're going to see which one of the two kind of rises to the occasion. One is going to be the assistant to the leader and one is going to show up as a leader because uh, usually most in most cases, both people don't show up as a leader. And from there, that will be the operations leader down in Orlando, Florida in March for our summit. So um, I'm, I'm a big believer in, in putting people to the test and giving people opportunities once they once they're showing. You know, my favorite thing is when people are are doing the work before they have the title and that that's those are the type of people you reward mike i thought you were gonna say something uh, I'm just left, thinking, that sounds like you anna doing left the, a speechless. Have the title um no that's awesome and i guess like obviously i haven't been at this as long as you have what it, what do you think it is about you you obviously cast a certain vision that makes people want to follow you and assume leadership roles. And I, I don't think they're doing it for the money. Yeah. It's, it's a growth opportunity. So I think it's two things. Um, I think the, yeah, and this, this applies to probably most industries. Um, I think the fact that I'm in the trenches um, sets an example and actually provides stability um, because if there's no matter what, you know, Jeff's always going to know how to do it because he's still going on appointments like we are. Mm -hmm. So I think being in the trenches is important. Um, and the second thing I would say is not having any fear. Um, you know, we're, we're, I've got, fortunately in, in our leadership team, we have um, a few individuals that lean more on the pessimist side than the optimist side. And that's a good thing. Right. I need that. Otherwise, we would make crazy decisions and and whatever. But at the same time, I know that those people appreciate that I operate from a position of no fear because that causes the vision to, to get bigger versus somebody that is always operating from a position of skepticism. So I would say not not, you know, be, being in the trenches and, and and operating with no fear. Is that something you plan on doing? forever or as long as you're in the business you're going to continue uh, as long as i'm as i'm um on the stage at our events talking about listing and selling homes and and how to build a big business in real estate i'm going to be listing and selling real estate i just think that that's the most authentic message that one could deliver that's great and so um you know in talking about casting a huge vision what's kind of next on the map for jga and your other companies everything that's kind of involved in your world what is your next kind of move to expand? Well, our big focus is Glover U. Um, you know, I, I am, I do have some brokerages that, um, you know, we're in the process of, of, of continuing to build and grow. Uh, but the majority of, of my time is spent with, with Glover U and in production. And, you know, when I say in production, I also mean working with our sales team. Because when I'm in production, you have to remember, I'm also leading by example. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm still active with our sales team. So um, I, I, I really appreciate the fact that Glover U has started, to, I mean, it's had momentum, but it's really starting to gain a lot of momentum. It seems like throughout 2020, um, we had gained a ton of momentum and um, I, I think we have a long way to go. I mean, there's over a million realtors um, out there, you know, in, in North America, there's I think 1.5 total in North America between the US and Canada. So um, we've just scratched the surface. I mean, we were planning on having a thousand people at our event uh, this year and, and in the winter and obviously COVID affected that, um, but but we were on we were on pace to, to be at that level and um, we're looking to put on a safe event uh, with, with substantially less than that, but but still that's that's really where my focus is right now. That's probably very, like you focused on Glover U, you're focusing on on your business also. So I imagine all they the content generate through Glover is passed on to your salespeople. 
yeah, they, they definitely go hand in hand uh, in, mm-hmm. in order for, for Glover U to continue to gain momentum and to continue to gain followers. I still have to be doing some amazing things with our team. We can't take huge steps back. Yeah. Like I, I coach with Marianne Gillespie for your guys. It's essentially like they have Marianne in the office beside them each and every day. What a huge advantage that is. Yeah. We'd like to think so. <laughs> do you, do you want to maybe shout out your event in March? I know we've done yeah, so, it a few uh, times. I know travel's a little sticky right now. You know, if you're coming from Canada, you might have to quarantine when you come home. Um, but it's Orlando, Florida, March 8th, 9th, and 10th. Uh, we do have a virtual option as well. Uh, three full days. We've got like 26 speakers, uh, six, twelve, eight, eighteen 18 breakout sessions, uh, masterminds, one-on-one interviews, a couple really cool keynote speakers. Uh, and that would be liveunrealsummit.com, L-I-V-E-U-N-R-E-A-L, summit.com for the details on the in-person. Yep, we're doing an in-person event, 25% capacity. Each chair is going to be six feet apart from the other chair. When you're not seated, you have to have your mask on. I mean, it's, it's, there's going to be some rules around it, but it's also Florida. So, uh, you know, in, in Florida in March is probably one of the best times to be down there. Uh, it's right before it gets super hot and it's a great time to get, get, get out of, of the cold. I think that's one thing that we share in common with uh, you Canadians. It's always cold in Detroit. <laughs> yep, you're pretty close to us. <laughs> We're experiencing the same situation right now. Yeah. Um, so that's great. Jeff, um, do you want to maybe just talk about maybe one or two things that you're looking forward to that people can expect from the Live Unreal Summit? Yeah, so um, when we're down there, we're act- we actually updated. Uh, so we did an event, uh, one of our first events, actually. It was January 2018, and I shared with the audience uh, what at that time was called the Jeff Glover sales system. And um, over the course of the last three years, we've been make, making some updates to it. We've been making some changes to it. And we feel like it's been enough time and we've made enough improvements to it that um, number one, we've renamed it. It's just called the Glover U sales system. Uh, I'm sorry, Glover U sales and business system. And we're going to be sharing that. So basically it's, it's I think, 24 um, 24 topics or segments on basically how to build a massive business. And I'm going to be going through each one of the steps of how we built ours. Plus there's panel interviews, plus there's one-on-ones and, and um, you know, we get to have a little fun too. We're going to have a welcome party outside by the, by the pool. So, you know, we'll be able to put that on safely. And, and um, you know, the main reasons why agents really should go to events is, not just for the content, it's for the networking and the people that you meet. I think of all the relationships I have today because I made the decision to get on an airplane and travel somewhere. Now I know today is is not the most comfortable time to do that. And I respect that for those that don't feel comfortable doing that, uh, which is why we have a virtual option. But if, if you're if you're not exposing yourself to to different thoughts, different ideas, then then you possibly you can't possibly be learning and growing. And if you're not learning and growing, then you're dying. Great point. There, there's a lot of agents that I talk to, especially in my new role, um, that just don't like to learn. And yeah. it's almost like an IQ test when I ask them, hey, like, are you willing to come to this event? We have this amazing training session. And if they say no, it's like, well, you're really missing out on an opportunity to grow your business. And if you're turning that down, mm-hmm. maybe we're not a good fit of business, right? Yeah. You know, there's there's a lot of reasons for people to say no to training. Um, but but yeah, I, I totally understand where you're coming from there. Awesome. So super excited about that. We'll make sure to link it in the comments. Awesome. Uh, anything else that you want to share with us today, Jeff? Anything? Well, I would say the number one question we get from time to time is, hey, Jeff, where can I get your resources? Where can I get your scripts? Where can I get some of these audios and some of this video? I would say the number one place people can go, and I appreciate you, Mike, given, you know, mentioning the podcast, which that is actually called the Live Unreal podcast. So that's pretty easy to find for those podcast fans out there. But the number one place would be the, the Glover U Inner Circle Facebook group, uh, which obviously it's free to join that. And that's just G-L-O-V-E-R space, the letter U space inner circle. And um, anybody can join our, our Facebook group. No, no cost. Amazing. We'll make sure to link that also in the bio. Uh, um, one of the last questions that we always ask our guests, Jeff, and, and we want to hear from you. Who is someone that you know that we should know that we should have on this podcast that our yeah. listeners would love to hear from? 
Yep. Yep. So um, you would very much value a, a, I mean, gosh, there's so many names I could give you. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to mention my, my friend, uh, Jeff Quinton. Have you guys had Jeff Quinton on yet? I don't uh, think so, no. He's out, he's out of uh, Ocean City, uh, New Jersey. And uh, him and I have been, been close buds for a long time. And I definitely would recommend you guys have him on. Awesome. Appreciate awesome. it. Thank you so much for your time today. Yep. You bet. Good luck. And we will see you guys soon. If not in Orlando, hopefully uh, sometime in wherever. Back in Canada. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Jeff. Take right. care.